seated. Now invite the choir for the choir intro it. to worship responsibly. Come, open your hearts to the Lord. <clears throat> Friends and family, all are welcome in the house of the Lord. Christ meets us here. He breaks the bread of salvation for us. Dear friends, let us rejoice in God's love. Let's pray, God of the lost and lonely, God of the secure and confident, gather us into your fold that we may be healed and transformed. Guide us into your world that we may be part of ministries of healing, hope, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn, let us sing to the glory of God, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let us stand and sing to God.
as we remain standing, let us pray together. God of justice and peace, bring your dazzling light into our hearts and spirits that we might see the glorious opportunities we have to serve you. Help us to see that following your mandate to feed the hungry, bring nourishment to those who thirst, offer clothing to those in need, visit the sick and those who are in prison, welcome the stranger, any activity of service as an act of great privilege and joy. We praise you for the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who boldly bids us care for each other and become those who bring good news of peace for all. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Today is the 25th Sunday after Pentecost, which is the last Sunday for this liturgical year, which we also celebrate as Christ our King, or Christ the King. And the hymn that we have sung reminds us that we must crown him Lord of all, for he is Lord of all. And as we live under the reign of Christ, the Lord of all, let us continue to exalt and honor him in our lives. And today, as we glorify God, acknowledging him as sovereign, as all-powerful, as ever-present and all-knowing, Christ our King, crown him Lord of all. At this time, I will invite our children as we sing to them hymn 100, 240. I am so glad that Jesus loved me. I invite them to come before the altar as I share briefly with them and pronounce to them blessing. 240. I am so glad that Jesus loved me.
exhort you on this topic, thanks living. What is the topic? Thanks living. Okay, in our gospel uh, lecture we reading for today, which is Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 45. It uh, shares about the judgment in a parable, a judgment in which all the nation gathered, and there was a separation of those who would go to the right and those who would go to the left, and uh, they were told that they were separated because of what they did to those whom Jesus called the least. And they were brothers or someone who was related to Jesus. And Jesus said in the parable that they feed those who were hungry, that they gave water to those who were thirsty, that they gave clothing to those who had no clothes, and they visited the, those who were in prison. So that was the basis of the judgment. But the theme of thanksgiving, I know that when we always do something good, people at times uh, say thanks. And sometimes they would write us a, a note or thanks uh, note. Or if uh, we, someone has done something good to us, at times we write them a thanksgiving note. But in that parable, it reminds us that God has done so much good for us that in order for us to say thank you back to God, we say thank you by living it. We say thank you by loving others. We say thank you by giving food to those who are hungry. We say thank you by giving water to those who are Thirsty. We say thank you by giving clothes to those who don't have any or who have few. And we say thank you by visiting those who are in prison. So by saying thank you to God, we live out. And that is where our theme comes. Thanks of living. So what do we do each day? Our life especially when it comes for loving others and attending to the needs of others, it comes our thank you to God. So whatever you do to your friends, whatever you do to family, whatever you do to those in need, what you are doing is a thanksgiving note to God. And that is where our things come from this morning. Thanks, living. So it is important that in whatever you do, especially when it is out of your love for God, that you love others. That is thanks, living. So I leave that theme with you today, knowing that there will one day in which each and every one of us will stand before the throne of grace and he will say go on the right go on the left those who go on the right are those who have lived their life in thanks living they have fed those who are hungry give water to those who are thirsty those who visit those in prison and those who go uh, give clothing to those who don't have it go to the right and to those who did not do thanks living they go to the left and to them is condemnation so when that time comes you our youth our children standing in this altar will say god i have been sending you my thank you note by helping providing loving my whole life was a life of thanks living in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen let us pray dear god before you 
our children and our youth at Kingstown Methodist Church. The also, O oh God, we reach out to those who are listening via radio and also through internet. We pray, O oh God, a blessing over them. First, we pray, O oh God, that they realize and know that their life belongs to you. And it is the hymn that we have sung that they realize that you love them. And we exhort them today that their lives will be a life of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and recognizing you. Thanksgiving in doing everything for your glory and for the glorification of your name. That whatever they do, whether they eat or drink or serve others or love others, it is done for your glory and your glory alone. Bless them in their education. Bless them in their work. Bless them in all that they do. May your presence be always be with them and your glory be always with them. This is our prayer. We pray in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Okay, have a blessed week. The commandments of our Lord Jesus. <laughs> our Lord Jesus said the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one, the one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And a new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I love you, that you also love one another. In a season that we can be so busy in the things that we do, we are reminded this morning, the first commandment to love God. The second is to love our neighbors and the new commandment that we love one another. Brothers and sisters, the warmth of God's love in our heart should cultivate a spirit of love for God and for each other. And especially in a time that hatred, malice, so many that can be happening around us and throughout the world. We are reminded this morning that those who belong to God, a distinctive mark, as Jesus said, you will know my disciples by their love. You will know them because they love. You will know them because you recognize love in their life. So it is important, as Christ commands us, let us love. Let us have a time of confession. I invite us in silence to confess our sin to God and pray for his forgiveness. general confession let us pray all almighty God our Heavenly Father we have sinned against you and each other in thought word and deed in the evil that we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance through weakness through our own deliberate fault we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins 
for the sake of your son Jesus Christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name amen Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners hear the good news if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now prepare our hearts for the word of God. Sing him 133, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. invite our readers to come forward for the reading of the word in Old Testament Ezekiel 34 11 to 16 20 to 24 Psalms 100 and Epistles Ephesians 1 15 to 23 gospel reading Matthew 25 31 to 46 the collect God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring them back the strayed and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, 
But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Verse 20. Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with flank and shoulder, and butted all at all the weak animals with your horns until this, you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ended the Old Testament reading. My sisters and brothers, I read Psalm 100. All lands summoned to praise God, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is He that made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of his pasture. We all read the verse. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the Holy Ghost, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 15 to 23. Here begin it. And I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. Pray that the Lord of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart, enlighten you, may know that what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the increasable good to his power, for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to walk in Christ when he raised him from the dead and scattered him at his right hand at the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and domination and, and above every name that is named and not only in the age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of filled all in, in all. In all. That the reading of the epistle. Hymn 134, Jesus Shall Reign.
The gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, <clears throat> then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those, these who are members of my family. You did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away with eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This congregation is a word gospel according to Matthew. Praise Christ. Thank you. May be seated. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Indeed, you are King and Lord of all. Speak to us as we come before the throne of grace. May your words enlighten our path. Direct our ways, transform our lives. May we be put right before you because of faith in Jesus Christ, because of the forgiveness that is ours through the atoning work on the cross. As we hear, as we meditate, may your spirit convict, may it lead us to your truth, and allow us, O oh God, to receive the truth, and may the truth set us free. This we pray in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. What are you asking God for? We know the, the needs that we have each day. When we wake up in the morning, we continue to search to meet those needs, material, mental, spiritual. And with the limitations that we encounter, we bring those needs before God. In our epistle reading today, Paul highlights the deep and the deeper need of Christians in the church at Ephesus as he prayed this intercessory prayer in 1st Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 23 it uh, makes us reflect on 
What do we ask God in life? What do we see as the greatest need of all in our life as we pray and utter our prayers? Just to give us two background before we move any further on this book of Ephesians, which is one of the four books of Paul writing when he was in prison. The other books was Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon. They were what we usually call as prison epistles writing from prison. Paul was trying to, to remind Christians of their position in the world as people who have come to know God and to live a life manifesting the power of God in their lives as the heart of the gospel as they overcome the physical, spiritual, sociological barriers of their time. In fact, he was in prison, but it never imprisoned the work and ministry of God in his life. He was imprisoned, yet it was not a barrier to sharing the good news to others. He was isolated, distant from his congregants, yet he used the available technology that was, was available then, writing letter, sending it, that they continue to connect to each other and share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, for he knew that there is nothing else in this world that saves people. There is nothing else in this world that brings life. That there is nothing else in this world that brings hope. But the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the case of the book of Philemon, it was a sociological barrier. A barrier between a slave and a slave master. He was writing that even though there was this sociological barrier, there is nothing beyond the power of the gospel as Jesus is King, Lord of all, and is in control of everything. When we reflect in this, especially when we go through the different barriers of our own life, whether it's physical, sociological, mental, the barriers that at times, things that we think that limits us in this life, these letters, which are profound, contains prayers and reminders to us that at the heart of our gospel, is the overcoming the power of God to set his people free and enjoy their eternal inheritance now. A second context of the book of Ephesians is there were so much spiritual forces at present at Ephesus that Paul tried to remind them that behind those problems that they see as physical is also the spiritual forces that they have to battle with each day. That indeed we will be hungry, indeed we will thirst, indeed we will have maybe at times struggled with wearing of clothes. There are needs within us that we may ask God but there is a greater need, which is the spiritual need, as we battle with the spiritual forces that was present then at Ephesus and present even now. 
As we continue to pray for God to provide us with good health, as we continue to pray God, to God to provide for us in our provisions, as we continue to pray to God to provide for us justice and all that we need and think that we need. Paul tries to remind the church at Ephesus that they need also to be reminded that it is not only flesh and blood we are against, but there are spiritual forces. There are spiritual forces that we battle with each day of our life. In this light, no one will doubt that a central part of our Christian life is prayer and praying. Like most of the things we are aware, there is a right way to pray and a wrong way to pray. Even as we understand that breathing comes naturally, but those of health profession can advise us that there is a right way to breathe and a wrong way to breathe. But this morning, I'm not going to dwell on the how, but the what do we pray for. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 reminds us that we at times do not know how or what to pray for, but we need the Spirit to guide us in order that we may know what to pray for. And we must be guided to know what we need. Because sometimes we ourselves do not know what we really need. I remember sitting in a meeting when they were discussing on how to assess the need of people. And there was a statement that was made, all of us are needy. Yes, indeed, we all have needs. But it, at times, it is a challenge to know which really is the need that is important to you. In Ephesians chapter 1, which is the first point that I would like to share today, as Paul writes his letter from prison to exhort the people of God, he gives them that there is a priority about a gift, a need, sorry, a need that they must have. And that need is to grow spiritually. He wanted to remind them it is good to pray for food, it is good to pray for our physical need, it is good to pray for our well-being. But foremost, as Christians, we must remind ourselves that at the depth of our need is the need to grow spiritually. Not only to grow physically, not only with the material needs of this world, but we must be as believers, cater for the spiritual growth of ourselves and others. A word by one of the church leader in one of the theological school as they were graduating just last week, him sending them saying, there are signs now in the world in how people live their lives that there are spiritual hunger at the depths of the many problems we are facing. People cannot love in family. The ways in which people live their lives today, there is an indication of the depth of malnourishment of the spiritual lives of people. It is now indicated in the social problems, now indicated in the political problems, now indicated in the church and ecclesiological problems. All of these problems at the depth of it is when the spiritual, the spirit 
of a person is hunger and in need. That is why Paul said this word, I have heard your faith in the Lord, and I have heard your love towards the saints. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. He was reminding them that what they are supposed to ask for as he is asking on their behalf, that they come to know God, that they come to receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, that they may know God, that their spiritual life may grow. And when their spiritual life grows, they are able to live their life for the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, if there is a prayer that we ask as a congregation today, that we ask as a nation, that we as people of God, in the times that we live in, when we see the social indications, the political divisions, the church struggles that we are going through, that our prayer is, that God gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know him. It is important that our world is so knowledgeable of so many things, yet God. The world has known so much but God. The absence of the knowledge of God can be seen in how people live their lives, in how they make their choices, in what they do each day, when life does not matter, when life is not important, and especially the decline in morality from the top to the bottom of society, to every aspect of our lives. It seems that there is no God at how people live their life lawlessly. There is corrupt at the highest level of government, to the highest level of church, to the highest level of society, to the highest level of family, to the highest, because there is no wisdom and revelation to know God. That is the greatest need. It's not just food. It's just not water. It's just not our freedom. It's just not our liberty. Brothers and sisters, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know God anew, that our life may be in tune to what God wants be in tune to the purpose and will of God. Solomon was asked to ask God for something. Solomon asked me something. And Solomon said, God, I'm just a child. Please give me the spirit of discernment that I may know right from wrong so I may lead your people in the right way. You know, we need now the spirit of wisdom which has encounters the revelation and the discerning spirit that we may know right and wrong, that we may live our life rightly for God and we may direct people in the right way. That is the importance, and especially that we may know God. The lawlessness, because people don't know God. They can think that they know God. They can have a sense that they know God, but lawlessness, corruption, sinfulness, is an indication that people do not have a sense of accountability to the supreme, the Lord of all. Because we are reminded today, brothers and sisters, that one day Christ will come again in all his glory. And he's going to say, go to the right and go to the left. If you live your life today understanding that, when there is something lying there, and you are tempted to take it, to steal. No, no, no. 
there is a time when he will say, go to the right and go to the left. When there is someone who is in need that you need to help, and you say, no, I will keep this for another day, you will give knowing that there is a day when he will say, go to the right and go to the left. There is judgment coming. But it is important for us to realize that the need for you and for me right now, brothers and sisters, to have the spirit of wisdom, to have the spirit of revelation. You cannot know God with your own power. You cannot know God by just doing good. You cannot know God just by coming to church and sitting down. You cannot just know God by thinking that you have done so much for God. You can only know God when you ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation for him to give to you. And that is why he told Solomon, you have chosen right. You have asked the most important, and that is why I'm going to give you more. When we pray, just don't pray for food. That is what the Bible says that we pray for the provisions. Just don't pray for longevity, a long life. A long life without wisdom is no life at all. A healthy life without wisdom is no life at all. And we could see that in the life of Solomon. Although he acts right, yet he did not live right throughout his life. And there was the problem. So it is important as the first step this morning that we in the the people of God sitting before God who we love Jesus and love others that we ask God with a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I know that our prayers in this past few weeks could have been different. Some of us ask that their political party to win. <coughs> And when it lost, we were really troubled. And some of us, as we asked for our political parties to win, when it won, we were the most joyful. And you see that some of us end right there. Our life is just for politics. Our life is just for the materials of this world. In this past season, I've been seeing how crazy people are for politics. I was speaking to the church school and I was in, uh, inviting them that we must ensure that our church schools in the Kingstown Chetabele circuit ensure that we have our children attend church school, nurtured in the faith, have the doctrinal. And you know, they said, oh, Rev, the attendance is not good. I said, I have seen the attendance at political rally. It's different. Age of the highest to the age of the lowest to those who are carried. And I have been a challenging people of faith. Do you know that all of this will one day end? That our needs cannot be satisfied by a political win or a political loss. Our needs cannot be satisfied by our food of our clothes. Our needs cannot be satisfied by the leaderships of this world. Our needs can only be satisfied when Jesus reigns, when his power is what we ask. And he gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him. This is not only in St. Vincent. Throughout the world, there is now 
an indication that the world does not know God. The best political structure U.S. now is in turmoil. They don't have now, they cannot look forward to a peaceful transition. What they think of structures to safeguard cannot. You know what they need? It's the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know God. Brothers and sisters, we may change system, but until people know God, until people fear God, until people know that the greatest need that we need is that spirit of revelation to know God, it is then and then alone that we could see what God can do in our lives. As I end this sermon this morning, Paul now reminds, once you have this, to ask the right thing, he says in verse 18, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. And he says, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? Brothers and sisters, when we ask God with the right thing, he will enlighten our hearts. And when our hearts is enlightened, we will know our hope. We will know what we are here for. And when people toss us to the left, to the right, you will stand firm. When people come and try to buy you out, to bribe you out, you know the hope that God calls you. People wonder, people wonder now in the world that we live in, how we have become so misguided. At the heart of our misguided life is the heart that is not enlightened to know what the hope we are called for. Brothers and sisters, we are born to die in this world to go into eternal life. We are just passing through life. Food, water, clothing are things that come and go. Wealth is what comes and go. Politics is what come and go. Church and religious service comes and go. Don't be too tied up to your denomination and your religious standings. Do not be tied up to your political standings. Do not be tied up to your sociological standings. Do not try to be tied up to your economical standings. Because all of them will one day finish. But what you are called for is the gospel of Jesus Christ. To know Jesus. To experience Jesus and his power. And I end today. The world seems to be intimidating Christians. Intimidating us as if we do not know what and who we are. If you have been intimidated because of fear of losing your employment, if you have been intimidated because of some of the things you face in life, ask the right thing. And God will show you what he told Paul to tell the Christians as Ephesians. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion above every name and is named not only in this age but in the age to come and he has put all things under his feet and he has made them him the head over all things for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all behind all that is happening brothers and sisters a spiritual force do not see them as men the struggles in our political division in our nation and throughout the world brothers and sisters it's just not flesh and blood alone there are spiritual forces in intimidating you and me Christians brothers and sisters when we try to show love they so hated when we try to show fellowship when we try to show reconciliation they so division we must remind ourselves that all these forces are under Jesus Christ we have so much that we miss to know until we ask right there was a a person with so many wealth that asked some of his workers please try and look for this uh, uh, item i want and they went try and buy it somewhere they looked around they went around they went around at the end they came to one of his own vaults and they find found it there that it was already in his possession and he realized that all the while they were seeking it was already there with them brothers and sisters as christians we have been searching some of us have gone to men some of us have gone to our politics some of us has gone to our our position and status some of us has gone to our wealth some of us has gone throughout the world searching but something is already with you someone is already with you and he is Jesus he has the power and the authority that is above all name and God has put all things under his feet that he is Lord of all and he is all in all so ask to God wisdom and revelation that you may see that he is already there you don't have to look for it far you have to see that is already within you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen as we reflect on god's word and responds him 338 savior shepherd like a shepherd lead us
from sin defend us. Sing us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us when we praise and pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us have. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, holy let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, brother, let us turn to Thee. Holy, let us seek Thy face. standing, I'll pray the prayer Paul prayed for the church at Ephesians to be the prayer that we pray today. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and, you lo and your love towards all the saints for this reason. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Bless your people as they stand before you today. Remind them, O oh God, of the greatest need for us to grow spiritually in our knowledge of you, O oh God that we are made aware of the power of Christ, the power that God has made work in Jesus Christ, that as Christ live in us, may we live under that power, and may that power be manifested in us as we face the challenges of this world. For you are the fullness who feels all in all. May you feel all aspects of our lives. May you reign supreme in our lives. And may we know you better each day. This is the prayer we offer. We offer in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. And as we end the radio broadcast, 
Let us say together the benediction as blessing to our brothers and sisters who are listening via radio. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Now invite the stewards for announcement and notices. My brothers and sisters, we'd like to thank Reverend Smith for his passionate sermon that I'm sure touched a chord in each and every one of our hearts. And as we leave and reflect, I'm sure there's much food for thought. As we continue to ask ourselves, what are we asking God for? So Reverend Smith, we want to thank you very much for stirring up the cause of our hearts. We would have welcomed all our members and friends who would have joined us in this act of fellowship and worship. We also welcomed our visitors or shut-in persons, those who are watching and viewing us on the World Wide Web, and those also who would have listened to us via the radio. We trust that you know our hearts would have been richly blessed. We did not get any record of any first-time visitors here today, and I will just throw the, the question, are there any first-time visitors worshiping with us today? No, we are all regular visitors. We are all regular congregants. So we trust that our hearts were richly blessed, and we urge us all to continue to rely on God's goodness and his grace and favor in our lives, and Remember, please remember our sick and homebound in our prayers and please feel free to give them a call um, because of COVID, the visit may be out, even though I know we would have start back our shut-in visits on the strict protocols, but please remember to give them a call and find out how they are doing. Our birthday persons for the upcoming week, November the 22nd to the 28th, today, the 22nd, we have Sister Beverly Reddock, who's celebrating her birthday. The 23rd, we have Tristan Williams. The 27th, we have Sister Sylvia Steele. She is one of our shut-in members. The 28th, we have Brother Kingsley Duncan and Brother Andrew Denny Sr. The 28th, we have also Brother Stanley Cultureman Walker. Are there any other birthday persons who are celebrating today for this upcoming week that we may have missed? Janice Sutherland, who's celebrating on November the 23rd. For our anniversaries, we have on the 24th, Brother Kevin and Ava Weeks. Brother Bailey, can you give us the birthday song, please? Brother Bailey, can we have it again with the music so that our celebrants can celebrate? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much and of course we'd ask Reverend Smith to administer God's blessings on our persons who are celebrating birthdays for an upcoming year at an opportune time in the service. 
leadership training, our annual leadership training for all leaders, officers, and potential leaders will take place on December the 5th from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this would be held at the church hall. Please remind that our circuit concert, our annual circuit concert will take place on January 24, 2021. The Kingston Women's League would like to thank you for the yearly contributions that you gave to the Dockers Funds. However, due to COVID-19, we would not be distributing any clothing, but they are asking for foodstuff or financial donations since this year they would be distributing a food basket to each person. And Darkest Day is on Tuesday, the 20, Tuesday December the 7th, 2020. And they are asking, um, they would like to receive these donations or contributions by Friday, December the 4th, 2020. So we can contact any member of the Women's League or the Darkest Group ministry to give them our donation so that they can fulfill um, this, this purpose that they have under God. Voices and prayers, they, the, these hymnals are now available at the church office for only $55. And I think these books do not have music, so you can get them at the church office for $55. Condolences, we do not have on record anyone who has passed from our congregation during the past week, but we urge us to remember those who have lost loved ones in our prayers. Our joint service would be held at the Kingston Chapel next week, Sunday, November 29th from 9 a.m. Please be reminded that each congregation should come prepared to share two of their harvest cantata items. And of course, we are reminding the harvest committee that come prepared next week to share two of our harvest cantata items. We'd like to rec recognize our young people when they perform and when they do outstanding things as God would have laid it upon their hands. And many of us would have seen or read in the newspapers that Brother Zachary Richards, he would have taken part, he and his partner in the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission competition, and they would have created an application under the, under the open category, and this would have been entitled Career Guidance, and they would have won under this category. So we would like to congratulate him. And we thank God for the blessings on our young people because we know Brother Kevin and our multimedia ministry, you know, they could use persons of this caliber for the honor and the glory of God. Even if you do not have these talents, I'm sure Brother Kevin can teach you and his team. So, Brother Zach, we thank you and we pray God's blessings upon you. Class meeting, class, most classes are meeting um, physically and class 26 and all the other classes who usually meet every other Tuesday please be reminded that your meeting starts 4 p.m. we continue to urge those classes that have not you know gotten off the ground or are not meeting we continue to urge you prayerfully to either you know if you're doing this zoom platform but you can venture out because the church the chapel is very big and we cannot underestimate, you know, the meeting of our classes, especially at this time. We rely on one another. We don't want to miss anyone in our classes. We don't want to, you know, neglect anyone who may not, I mean, we may not have been seen. So I urge you to, you know, try and get your class up and running. These smaller groupings are very essential. Sunday school, we would have heard the new dispensation for our Sunday school meeting on, on Sunday mornings before worship at 7 a.m. Again, this new dispensation will take place in the new year while we allow our resource persons, some of them right here in our church who are involved in leadership training and just getting the administrative issues up and running for the new dispensation for our Sunday school and we ask that you continue to prayerfully 
raise up this ministry before God, our Sunday school teachers, we cannot take them for granted. Year in, year out, you know, God has raised up some new ones who came into the fold and we want to give God praise and thanks. So prayerfully, let's lift up this ministry as we also lift up everybody who is involved in this uh, ministry. Mission, we would know that we are purchasing a van for our mission project this year and persons would have received a colored envelope over the past couple of weeks. This envelope was primarily to place a special offering that would go towards the purchase of this van. And today, today we are picking up this offering as well as there are two other Sundays, for every fourth Sunday, two other consecutive fourth Sundays, we would be reminded to pick up two other um, special offerings that would go towards the purchase of this ministry van. Youth Fellowship, the Youth Fellowship met on Friday the 20th of November via the Zoom platform, and they will be meeting again on December the 4th, again via the Zoom platform at 8 p.m. Their in-person meeting would resume in January 2021. A final notice from our junior choir, they are holding a cake and juice sale Sunday, the 13th of December, 2020, immediately after morning worship. The items available for sale are cake, you know, any kind of cake you wish, and uh, juices, mostly local juice. These would be done via order, so you can place your order by contacting any member of the junior choir before December the 9th, 2020. Please let us support this ministry and our candlelight service will be held on the 13th of December at 6 p.m. This is our Kingston candlelight service at 6 p.m. These are our notices as we wait upon you for your tithes and offerings.
let us pray. Almighty and eternal Father, Lord God, we count it a privilege and an honor where we come in, can come into your sanctuary and where we can worship you. Father God, as a congregation, we pray for wisdom and we pray for a spirit of discernment, Lord God, to know you more. Even now, we come before you and we offer praise and thanks for the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to work and to earn. And we bring before your holy throne, Lord Jesus, all that you have placed on our hearts to bring unto you. We pray, Lord God, that you would continue to use it, bless it, and multiply it for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We are reminded to remember the family of Lexi Joseph, who has departed his life. Invite those who are celebrating their birthday and uh, anniversary, if they could stand. Let us come before God in prayer. All good gifts comes from heaven above. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for the blessing of life to whom they celebrate their birthdays this week. And also for those who celebrate their anniversary Mr. and Mrs. Wilkes, we bring their lives before you today. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit will fill their hearts as they are grounded in Christ, rooted in his love, that they may live for your glory. We pray, O oh God, as they discern as they choose and live life, that you will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that they may know you better, more, and every day with Jesus will be sweeter than the day before. Every day as they live their life, and every day as they celebrate their marriage together, we pray, O oh God, as we bring their lives before the throne of grace, knowing, God, that your love for them is sufficient, that your mercy is sufficient, that your forgiving work in Jesus Christ is sufficient, that your grace is sufficient for their lives. This is the prayer we offer. We offer in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Have a blessed birthday and anniversary. Did I pronounce wrong? Or a little bit wrong? <laughs> so how many years, Brother Kevin, you want to share? 100? <coughs> okay. We continue to support those who are married, especially for us young married couples, uh, those who are ahead in the journey, 
give us some tips so we can uh, keep together as long as we can through the grace of God, especially in a time when marriage it seems to be a drive through You come just a few days, a few years, you go out. But marriage is supposed to be from, uh, from the time you begin until the time you die. Let us come before God in prayer as we intercede. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, we know of the, the need that there are. But we bring at this time the prayer of Moses in Exodus chapter 33 as he intercedes for the people of Israel. He said, God be our friend. God, we will never go without your presence. God, show us your glory. We pray, O oh God, that you be the friend of all of us who are here and all of us here in St. Vincent and all of us throughout the world, that we may love you, that we may surrender our lives to you, and we may know you personally. We intercede and pray that people may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, who is the power of God, who is our all in all, the greatest gift to the world. As we end this liturgical year and as we anticipate Advent, we pray, O oh God, <clears throat> that you're coming, that you are coming and you are coming again, that you will come into the hearts of your people. that the wisdom and revelation in Jesus Christ may settle in our hearts that we may know you. <clears throat> we pray of your presence and we pray of your glory. The need, physical, spiritual, and mental within our community we bring to you. We pray, O oh God, of healing, physical, mental, and spiritual, and relational that there may be healing in our community, in our churches, in our families, and throughout the world. We pray as we bring all these needs before you, as we surrender to you, our political leaders, our church leaders, our communal leaders, our family leaders, we bring to you our institution leaders, I pray that they may be influenced by the presence of your spirit to lead them, O oh God, that they may lead us into your kingdom. This is the prayer we offer. We offer in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Coming this morning, sing the Christmas tree. I begin to smell black cake and all those that is coming for Christmas. And I know the Vinci Christmas is uh, one of the best in the world. But as we go into Advent, please do not forget the one who is coming. That he is coming to our hearts. That he is coming again. And as we continue to, eat, to be in that season, let us stand up and stand up for Jesus. Our closing hymn, 339, stand up, stand up for Jesus. <clears throat>
in this his glorious name Who that I his now serve him against our numbered foes that courage rise with danger and strength to strength and up stand up for bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.